Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Hakuna La Planta. My name is Kevin and today is a chaotic kind of video. So I think a week ago I posted a picture on my YouTube saying that I wasn't able to, you know, come up with any content or film any videos for the week because I was busy with plant chores. A few of you said that you would like to see that kind of video. And so I caved and um, I just filmed what I had to do this weekend. So yeah, it's really chaotic. There's really no direction. It's me jumping um, between different tasks and topics and whatever. And yeah, so before I jump into this video, if you like these kind of videos and you like my content, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel and also follow me on Instagram if you like plant pictures. I post pictures every single day. Okay, so again, this is a warning, very chaotic. There's no real direction. It's just random clips of me doing plant things. And this is just kind of what I do on the weekends. It takes a whole bunch of my time. Um, but if you're into that, then stick around. Okay guys, so it is Friday evening. I just got home from work, but um, it just so happened, is that the saying? It just so happens. Yeah, okay, it just so happens. It sounds weird. But anyways, um, I bought a bunch of plants and um, I'm currently just kind of isolating, but not really, cause like obviously pests can fly sometimes. But basically I kind of keep them far away from my main collection and I spray it off with just a simple insecticidal soap solution. And so the one that's widely available, at least in Canada, is the Safer's brand um, insecticidal soap. I just follow the directions. Um, this doesn't necessarily kill all pests. I know it's not really effective um, when it comes to thrips. And so I'm just kind of covering like spider mites. Um, it says aphids, white flies, and other listed insects. I don't know what those are. Okay, mealybugs, soft brown scale. Anyways, this is not a sponsorship. So I don't know why I'm going off. And yeah, I guess I will change the... Ooh. Okay, so here is my rack of plants. There's some Syngoniums. There's um, a Mandula pothos. There's some Epipremnums. So yeah, I'm just gonna spray them down with this pump and yeah. Jesus, that's not what I want. Nope, that's not what I want either. Ooh, this pressure's too much. So I just kind of saturate the whole plant and I truly believe, and this is just my opinion and based on, you know, what I've heard, you need to coat the entire plant if you want to ensure that um, you get the majority of the pests. This Manjula is so cute. This is a Syngonium 3K, wait. Yeah, Syngonium Three Kings or Magic Marble. Ain't she cute, everyone? Also guys, this is the Syngonium Freckles and it's a plant that was never on my radar. Yeah, like I just fell in love with it. So I got it and here she is, so cute. And last but not least, this is an epipremnum that's kind of not, it's like a species of it that's not, I don't know what it is. Um, it was labeled as like epipremnum um, silver blue. And you could see kind of that bluish silvery tinge when the light hits it. I think it's just gorgeous. Okay, and I just let them sit here for a little bit just so, um, you know, I just let them sit. And yeah, I don't think I'm ready to give like a pest control kind of like tips and tricks video because um, I still don't know if I'm like doing the right thing, but I mean, I think it's working. I get a few questions about the use of neem oil. Um, I have, I mainly was using neem oil because um, I heard that thrips are very resilient when it comes to um, 
you know, soap solutions or insecticidal soap solutions. And so in the summertime last year, I was using the insecticidal soap along with a neem oil solution and it didn't work. So along with like the foul, the foul smell of it, it just like didn't work. And now there's all this like stuff coming out how neem oil might not be safe um, for just the fumes of it. But anyways, that's a different topic. So yeah, so I mean, I, every time I buy a plant, I kind of just leave it out. I spray it initially. I wait two to three days and then I spray it again with insecticidal soap. Um, just to make sure I capture and kill all those buggers. And something that I've started doing recently, because um, again, I said these, this insecticidal soap doesn't necessarily get thrips, but I've started just to keep track, I started to put these um, thrip blue um, sticky traps. And like, for example, I put this like two, three days ago after I treated. And I could see one, I don't know if it's a thrip or a fungus gnat, but there's one right here, y'all. Right over there. And to be honest, guys, I can't necessarily tell if it's a thrip or a fungus gnat. They look very similar when they're on these traps. And yeah, I have a second one here. There's one over there, one in the center right there, three, and then on the flip side, Oh, on the flip side, there's actually two more. Four and five. So yeah, I just keep these around just so um, if there is any adult thrips or I mean fungus gnats too, like if they're around the plant, um, this will kill them and it'll prevent them from flying into my collection. <laughs> Um, something that like I didn't necessarily like research but I just do it because I feel like I mean it's working like there's a lot on here I love how I'm just like waving this and the sun is setting oh my god hold on okay it's dark I don't want to get my light um, but yeah that's this is one of the chores for the weekend and yeah Okay guys, so it is the next day. It is around 9 a.m. Um, on a Saturday morning and I am just starting my plat chores. I just kind of took my time. I drank my coffee, it was all good. So currently I have a lot of propagations propagating in just plain old water. And let me just show y'all. So they're all over here <laughs> and then the Thai constellation prop propagations right over there. So yeah, I think this is kind of overkill or like extra, but I change the water every couple days, every two to three days, just so I could kind of monitor like if there's any rot, if there's anything, you know, going on. And so yeah, maybe I'll do a brief pan of what I'm propagating in water right now. We have the Syngonia mojito over here. Then behind it, we have all my Epipremnum panatum, Avo vergatums right over here. Then we have the Raphidophora pertusa, just one cutting. Oh, actually, we have more here. <laughs> this is more Raphidophora pertusa. Then we have a lot of Syngonium chia pens right over here. This is a single um, top cutting of my Philodendron Cream Splash, Syngonium Landlandii, the Producer, more Cream Splash propagations here, Epipremnum Panatum Cebu Blue. This, oh my gosh, this is my Anthurium Esmeraldens. I checked the roots. I switched it into Pond recently and the roots were gone. So, you could see here that she is growing a root, which is really, really, really exciting. A medium, medium silver, and my Syngonium Albo Variegatum. There's probably, I want to say, 20 cuttings in here. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh my god, I totally forgot this little cutie, Monstera Celtibacana. And then, of course, my <laughs> Monstera Thai Constellation. If y'all missed it, I chopped the top part of my Monstera Thai Constellation. Don't worry, there are two plants in that pot um, that y'all have seen before, 
But um, yeah, I do you know what? I cut it further, but maybe I'll show that later. There are three cuttings in total in here. So yeah, I'm just going to change the water and maybe I'll talk a little bit. This is a little awkward. Like, I don't know, like, is this how people vlog? I don't even know. I just kind of check on the cuttings and then look at the roots. And so for example, this Pertusa, nothing from this node or aerial root, but the one up here looks so good. And that's actually one tip that um, I've been giving, give, giving, oh my God, Filipino. But I always recommend that you submerge the entire cutting in water just because for example, this wasn't present and there was no like sign of any aerial roots when I put this in water. And now it's the one that's, you know, the it's the node that's popping out a healthy juicy root. Whereas the one at the bottom here is like not doing anything. So always submerge a lot of your stem um, that includes the nodes, just so you have a better chance of rooting your cuttings. This is the single new mojito here. You could see they're pretty recent cuttings, but you could see that these aerial roots are getting real juicy. So that's cute. So a lot of people ask me because I'm so obsessed with propagating if I'm planning to sell cuttings. Yes and no. Right now, no. Um, as you can see, they're not ready to be shipped um, or anything. But also, I'm, I'm very new to the whole, you know, I've never sold a plant before and I'm, I feel kind of nervous about it. So I just kind of want to like organize myself first and obviously give the chance for these plants to grow and mature and acclimate to like soil, for example, because I think I'm going to sell the majority of my plants in soil. Anyways, the Epipremnum Panatum Albovergatum. Let me show you this cup, guys. So my friend who actually came up with the name Hakuna La Planta, when I started my plant journey on social media, on Instagram and YouTube, uh, she made me this mug. It says Hakuna La Planta, and then it says Certified Plant Daddy over here. So shout out to Marianne. She's She's, I hate her, I'm okay, no. <laughs> So the second one of my Epipremnum Panatum Albovergatum. Got some nice roots over here. Okay, so moving on to my Syngonium Chia Pens propagations, but they tend to take longer to root. And with that, I've had more issues with um, cuttings rotting in, in either water, leka, or pond, whatever method I use. And so yeah, for example, these have been propagating for probably a month and like there's literally no sign of roots. This small little cute shot glass of Monstera Sultipicana cuttings, um, they just start to pop out roots. Can y'all see the roots? They're so cute. But yeah, I recently transferred my Monstera Sultipicana plant into soil. Um, and then these were kind of the immature or like parts that like kind of broke off. So that's that. Okay, next up guys is my Philodendron Cream Splash, a plant that I really wanted. And then when I got it, I kind of regretted it. Um, I think I said this in the houseplant tour, but she was giving me wonky leaves and it was either if she gave me tons of cream like this leaf, she would be tiny and kind of it didn't like hold its leaf shape and then when it had a lot of green and not a lot of cream um, it, it was gigantic but I mean you could see like maybe just a tiny tiny bit of that cream so I decided to just propagate it and I mean she's 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 uh she's making some progress got some root growth right here and then there's some more on these ones. Actually, they all look like they're rooting, which is great. Oh my God, so exciting. Okay, Syngonium Wendlandii. Um, I just chopped her, so there's no progress. So that's her. Uh, the Anthurium Esmeralda. So you could see that down here, all the roots right away, but then there are two new ones. So this one over here, and then right over here. So these two. Thank God. Okay, moving on to the Cebu Blue here. Look at this root. I probably have to plant this one soon because that is an amazing root over here. 
the Amidria Medium Silver. I don't know what to do with this. I'm just going to keep it in water. I don't want to deal with it right now, but I could, I could actually plant this. I don't know. And then I have my uh, Syngonium pot. I'm spilling. Oh my God. If it's not like it's water. I mean, I'm not going to go through all of them, but you could see a few root growth situations. Okay. Last but not least, I have my Monster Tide Constellation propagations. I guess I'll show you. Oh my God. It's going to be dripping everywhere. Okay. So one of these cuttings over here, you could see the brown root was the existing aerial root. And then you could see new uh, healthy roots, which is fantastic. The second one over here has this new root coming out of nowhere. And then this brown root was the aerial root. And there are, there are signs of new growth with like these white things. Every time I see this, I'm like, oh my God, roots are going to come out. So exciting. And then last but not least, the top cutting, which has the freshest aerial roots. So I think they were maybe up to here before. And ever since I chopped and put into water, they have since grown. And I mean, the leaves are still really good. Um, I do check this one. I mean, I check all of them every two days, but I keep a close eye on this one just because it's a bigger plant. The wounds are bigger, as you can see. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I mean, I obviously don't want this one to die because I mean, potentially I could get three new Thai constellations, which is insane. And yeah, for those who want to see the video in regards to this, it won't be out for another three months. Um, I'm doing one of those, um, progress videos with this one. Um, so here's a sneak peek. Got some root growth. So yeah, I'm just filling up the bucket. Um, my Thai constellation sits um, against the window next to the mother plant of my Thai constellation. And then um, the other propagations for the most part, they're under a grow light. Um, and my grow light stays on for about 12 hours, actually 14 hours a day. And um, I mean, I've been getting tons of success, so I'm going to keep doing what I do. Okay, so I am going to finish up here, put all the plants back, and then I will just join you guys in whatever chore I have next. Okay, we're here on the bedroom floor. I had a different plan, but my neighbor's on her balcony. It's really nice in Toronto this weekend. It's like very like spring to summer like weather. And so she could enjoy, but I'm going to hide on the floor because I don't want her to see me talking to myself um, while holding plants. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, I'm basically going to top off um, all my plants in LECA with plain old water. Like I mentioned before, I change my nutrient solution for all my plants in LECA every two weeks and every week um, alternating, I do a top off just to kind of manage the amount of nutrient solution in the, um, I guess the reservoir and ultimately, most importantly, the pH. So like mentioned before, it is believed that the perfect range for plants to absorb nutrients is between 5.5 to 6.5. Obviously there's a lot of factors that play into this, like how fast your plant is absorbing nutrients and or water, the temperature of your environment, the amount of evaporation from the reservoir, but anyways, ultimately your plant's reservoir will go down through time and you need to top it off with water. With a solution that I make, my pH of my solution tends to go more acidic. So I want to say, I mean, I think this is right, but I think it goes to about a 4 or 4.5. And so with the addition of water, um, you kind of bring up that pH back to like a 5.5 or a 6. So. I have an example here. This is my Philodendron Pink Princess. Uh, let's look at the newest leaf here again. Actually, no, she has since put out this leaf with not, not any pink. I'm just going to show you guys. I'm going to take some of the nutrient solution out of the reservoir and show you what the pH is uh, after a week. Also, look at the roots, everyone. She is thriving. Okay, so I just took a little bit into this pH tester. I'm going to put a you drop yawns. Okay. So it is bright red, which means uh, we're about a four right now. You could see that the pH here 
right now after a week is a four. So not the end of the world. Like I said, I basically top up my plants with just plain old water. And when I do that, it brings it closer to like a 5.56 maybe. What I have here is this dramatic um, pressurized spray situation. And I kind of use this because it kind of saves time taking the plants out I'm sure you've seen that all my plants are kind of clustered together. So it's hard to reach. Like I could easily get a cup and just like pour and reach and pour um, to where the plants are. But it gets really messy. There's a lot of spillage. And so when I use this pump and when I take off the spray nozzle here, um, I'll show you, I guess. I just kind of go like this. Can you all see it? Okay. And... I just kind of, it's weird. I just kind of gauge on the weight. And then I obviously check, but sometimes I don't check and it's fine. But I just kind of, oh, I'm just, y'all are distracting me. I overfilled it, y'all. Oh my God, okay, hold on. Okay, before I, <laughs> let's measure the pH first. One, two, three, okay. So after we added tap water, the pH is now at a happy, like 5.5, I would say, 5.5, yes. And that might have been a bad example because I overfilled it, so I might have been putting more water. But um, in the case of that, I do have another plant. So my alocasia, dragon sail, y'all. Let's look here. Oh my God, look at the roots, guys. <laughs> I'm so happy. Oh my gosh. I love this plant. Anyways, y'all know that already. Okay. So similar, this is I think a 4.5 or a 5 or 4. I don't know. It's pretty red. <laughs> and hopefully I won't overfill it like the pink princess. Uh, a little bit more. Okay, so here we are, one, two, three. Okay, so again, we are at a 5.5, I think. Would you say that? I think that's a 5.5. Like I said, it's going to be different in your environment, um, but for me, it always ends up that my pH solution after a week is more acidic. So I don't always check the pH. I just did this to kind of show you and explain a little bit why I do it. But ultimately, I just go around my plant room with all my plants in Lekka, kind of stand there. It's pretty boring. I don't think I'm going to show you guys. I just stand there filling it up. Maybe I'll do like a B-roll situation, but that's what I'm going to do now. It's now 10, 12. I'm actually going to time it because I've been curious um, as to how long it takes me to do this. Um, I think it might be like an hour, which is like crazy. But uh, yeah, we'll see. Okay guys, so it is 10.46. So that actually took me, that was like half an hour, um, which is a lot faster. I think it's because I transferred a lot of my plants out of LECA. Um, so I forgot to mention that um, in this process, I also use this time to water the plants that are in soil or pond. And for those plants are either in a pot that has like that meter thing that shows you how much water is in the reservoir or they're in a clear like cash pose so I could see the water level. And so I think that's why it was faster because a lot of my plants in soil, I watered them yesterday or the day before then, they don't need to be watered again. And yeah, that was a long process, um, but yeah. Okay, so moving on to the next task. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I really like babying my Hoyas, more, more specifically, 
the Hoyas that are large and fast growers. And because of that, I constantly need to, you know, keep tying down these tendrils over here just so it promotes either new growth or new leaves. So yeah, I do this every weekend. Um, I also do this midweek. Uh, this is my Hoya Falora slash Hoya Linusii. Um, and yeah, if y'all missed it, here are the blooms. It bloomed for the first time, I think a month ago. And I think there's a ton of peduncles on here, but I think there's one that's like real close unless it died. So there's more, but I don't want to move it. So yeah, I'm just going to tie all these tendrils down. You can see they're kind of like attacking me. And I am using plant Velcro. Um, very common. You can find it anywhere. I buy mine on Amazon. And I'll put a link in the description if y'all haven't seen this before, but it's pretty common. Anyhow, I'm just gonna try to tie this down. And yeah, for example, this was the one that I tied down. I'm not going to tie it down anymore. I just tied it higher up here. This is a really bad example because y'all can't see anything. This is really weird talking and doing this because I'm like, what do I talk about? Okay, so I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna bend it down. When you're kind of training your Hoya uh, and anchoring the tendrils downwards, if you take a vine and you bend it, it'll facilitate more growth to like the top part of that vine. I forget what the term is called, but you could kind of see that up here. So all these things, all these new growth points, they're because I took the tendril and I bent it and the node just at the top point up here um, started growing a new growth point. So these are all like new plants. In the long run, it kind of pays off to be honest. Cause then you get a fuller plant like this one. Okay, so this is my Hoya Strauss Lisa y'all. Oh my God. So she is a stunner right over here. These are going to be Hoya Ashrahouse Lisa flowers. I'm really excited. This is the first time ever. And yeah, I mean, sometimes there's more tendrils that you need to tie down. For example, this one only has this single one over here. So I'm just going to train it up and put more Velcro. Okay, this one is getting out of control. This is my <laughs> Hoya Obscura. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Can we take her in? The top looks insane. Like, what's going on? Cutie, cutie, cutie. The same point I have with, you know, training your tendrils down so that it encourages branching upwards. There's maybe like one, two, there's like three growth points at the top and y'all can't see it, but I promise you that some of them are there. You could see a couple of them. This probably is wrong. But I've heard that Hoya vines always like to either grow outwards or upwards. So if you're training a vine down, the plant is just going to force itself to put out a new growth point growing upwards. Again, I don't know if that's right, but that's just based on what I've heard. And I mean, I'm seeing it. <laughs> oh, this plant is so beautiful. Um, I posted a picture of this one. Um, on Instagram saying like, I know it's hideous with this netting and these zip ties and everything, but the moment I put this netting to offer more support to the tendrils, it started pushing out these gigantic leaves. So this one specifically, I use zip ties to kind of um, guide the tendrils just because it's hard with the Velcro. But anyhow, I think we're okay when it comes to this one. I think she's fine. Okay, and last but not least, I have two of the same plant. One is in Lekka, one is in Pawn. It is my Hoya Hanye. Okay, so let's start off with this one. So this one is in Pawn. She's growing better than the one in Lekka. Ah, uh, do you know what? She might be okay. This is the second one. She's a little cutie. Although this one over here is all right. For now, um, I'm going to train it downwards just a little. Okay, so that's about it for this one. <sighs> okay, what's next? Hey guys, um, so I 
just woke up from a nap, an unplanned nap. <laughs> so um, this is going to be the last thing I do for this video. Um, and yeah, I've been really just ignoring um, repotting this plant for so long, but she's getting kind of big and unruly. So I'm sure y'all are familiar with the <laughs> alocasia golden bone here. So there's actually, I want to say, four new plants. Oh my God, look at such a mess. But I'm basically <laughs> going to take, um, I'm going to pour the laka out. I'm going to um, divide the plant. And I don't know if I'm going to put it in laka or soil. But yeah, it just needs to happen because she's, she's a bit much. Just a little bit. <laughs> Oh god, this is gonna be a pain. I have a towel on the floor because I know it's gonna get real messy. Okay, y'all, look at this root system here. <gasps> Crazy. Of course, there's some roots that did not survive. Okay, I think I got the first one out. I think it just broke off. But. Here's one. This is the uh, one where I broke the leaf off, um, but she has one still. So let's just hope for the best for that one. <laughs> okay. Here's the second one over here. She's a cutie. Look at these roots. Okay. This one's a big one. This is the third one over here. All those roots. Okay. Here's a big one, and basically, oh yeah, here's the roots. The mother plant, there's two that I don't know if I want to separate them. Okay, um, so uh, I made a mess. Uh, I'll show you now. Uh, so <laughs> here are all the pups, a lots of leka towels on the floor and here are all our casualties so i did repot the mother um oh, she's so like naked now it's like wow and i still don't know what i'm going to do but i want to clean up first so just give me a second okay so it is roughly an hour later i didn't film anything <laughs> I was a little stressed, so I didn't want I don't want y'all to see that. Um, but I have them all in soil. So I made the decision to put them in soil. So we have so here's one over here. She's a little cutie. The second one <laughs> is the one that I broke, but she has one leaf. We'll see how that does. This one over here is in a self-watering pot right there. And she is gorgeous. This one's a beautiful plant. And then last but not least, the biggest one right over here. All of these gorgeous leaves that are probably going to die. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, I don't know why I did that, but I did it. And um, yeah. Okay, guys, I guess that's it. So I knew I was going to feel stressed filming this which I did, um, so I don't know if I'm gonna do this again. Um, but, like, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, seeing, you know, behind the scenes what I do um, on the weekends mainly, um, or plant chores that I usually do. But yeah, if you like these kind of videos, just let me know in the comment section below. And also, if you have any questions about anything I did today, um, and you want me to do a more in-depth video about that, um, you could ask me again in the comment section below. And if you've made it to the very end, thank you guys so much. I greatly appreciate it. And yeah, I'll see you guys later. Bye.